Let's talk about the thing that we're here to talk about, OK, the thing that excites us the most. We really think that we can, with generative AI, take data and AI to just a completely different level. So that's what we want to talk about. All right, so uh, what do we want to do? I want to basically talk about two things today, just two things. Uh, first thing is, how do we democratize data? Larry already kind of touched on it. We're excited that we think that we can actually bring this technology to everyone in an organization so that anyone who can speak English or just use words or their mother tongue can ask questions from the data. So we're going to talk a lot about that. It turns out that's actually way harder than you think. Uh, but we have great announcements there. That's probably the thing that I'm most excited about. And then second, we're going to talk about how do we democratize generative AI, AI into every product and service that exists out there. So what we mean by that is all of you represent organizations that have services and products. How do we infuse AI into them so that you can all make that revolution that's happening a reality? OK. Um, so let's start with the left one. So how do we democratize access to data? So everyone, not just people who know Scala, Java, Python, SQL, uh, can do this. OK. So I actually think this was a really, really prescient tweet by Andre Karpathy, who actually, by the way, gave a keynote here a few years ago. You should check it out. It's the highest rated keynote uh, of all the Data and AI summits. So check out Andre's keynote at Data and AI summit. But he said the hottest new language is English, or the hottest new programming language is English, um, or you know any other uh, language that you're familiar with. And we're very excited about that. So when we started Databricks, we wanted to democratize Data and AI. Uh, and we said, look, how do we enable every organization to be able to leverage data analytics, AI, and get insights from it and do predictions? Uh, and we started with actually Scala and Java. And then we said, well, look, let's broaden that so that we can reach bigger audiences, so that more people can do this. So we added Python, and Python become a first-class citizen in Databricks and Spark and uh, Delta and all these things that we were doing. And then I would say about five years ago, we said, let's broaden it even further. Now we can reach really broad masses with uh, SQL, uh, with our data warehouse and so on. But we really, really hope that with the LLMs and generative AI, we can broaden it now to reach the whole enterprise or every organization or every person that's in an organization. As long as they can speak English or any other um, natural language, they should be able to ask questions from the data. So that's what we're excited about. And that's why I'm really, really excited to announce something called Lakehouse IQ. Okay? So Lakehouse IQ is a knowledge engine. And we'll explain what that is in a second. Uh, but here is the problem. Every product right now on the planet, they're basically putting an uh, assistant that you can chat with in every product. There's announcements every day. Someone's added an assistant. You can write things in English, and you can ask questions. And they make for really cool demos all right, on stage. So we'll do some of those here, too. Uh, but the truth is they don't work. Okay? They don't work because it turns out it's actually really hard to use them in reality for real problems. So Lakehouse IQ is the knowledge engine that sits in the data platform that addresses this. And we're very excited. I actually think this will be the future of Databricks. And it's something that we just started working on now. We're going to work on for many, many years. So we're starting to uh, make it available now. But we keep pushing the boundaries on this. But instead of hearing from me, I want to welcome my co-founder, okay, the creator of Apache Spark, and our CTO at Databricks, Matei Zaharia, to stage. Thanks a lot, Ali. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, so, you know, if you've looked around, um, every company on the planet is looking at their difficult uh, technical problems uh, and just slapping on an LLM. Um, how many of your bosses have asked you to do this? I assume it's like pretty much everyone here. Um, the problem is that in many domains, and especially you know, the challenging domain we're in of enterprise data, uh, just naively adding an LLM assistant doesn't really work. And the challenge is that in your domain, in your company, um, you have a lot of um, uh, context, jargon, terminology, data, uh, org structure, and so on that's unique to you. And to make sense of business questions and to answer them accurately, you need um, you know, LLM-based features that actually understand that context. So every organization has its own unique jargon, data, org structure, et cetera. Um, so just as some examples. Um, here I'm showing um, 
uh, I'm showing a software company. This is actually Databricks. So here are some of the terms we use internally. Uh, so DBUs, if you're a customer, you know they're a unit of compute that we use for billing and pricing. Nephos, I'm not sure how many people know that. Nephos is our internal uh, code name for serverless, offering serverless compute. Uh, Mac is a monthly active customer. Warehouse is a thing that runs you know, SQL queries. Job is a scheduled job. Now, if you look at a, a different company like a retailer, um, they will also use some of the same words, but, but they'll mean something totally different. So warehouse for a retailer is like an actual warehouse. You know, They have these terms like Boris and Bopis and Pop that mean something very specific. And there's a lot of jargon that's like only in retail, not to mention the unique stuff inside each company you know, as, as it accumulates sort of decades of uh, growth and experience. Um, and finally, if you look at a telecom, they also have terms like Mac and Pop and so on, but they mean something totally different. Um, so even if you, if you get a simple question, you can imagine this question in our assistant, like how many DBUs were there in Europe last quarter, it's actually really hard to tell what this question means unless you really understand how the company works. You have to know what DBUs are. You have to know what Europe is, like what exactly, you know, how, how does that map to columns in a, you know, in a SQL table? And even the fiscal year is different at each company. Our fiscal year actually, you know, begins in February. So uh, you have to know all these things. Um, and even for DBUs, I just looked it up on Wikipedia. It turns out there are many other things that mean DBUs. It can be a chemical, it can be a university, it can be a unit of volume, you know, all kinds of stuff. So how does Lakehouse IQ solve this? So Lakehouse IQ takes in a whole bunch of signals about how data is actually used in your organization. And we can do that partly because we have this product surface that goes all the way to end users with things like dashboards and notebooks and you know, just all the stuff that people build with their data. So it's all centered on Unity Catalog. It takes all the metadata on there. But it also takes in docs, dashboards, notebooks, your org chart and groups, popularity signals. You know, maybe there are 1,000 tables with customer in the name, but like one of them is used you know, much more often, uh, lineage and, and the actual queries running on them. And we use these to build models for your company based on its use of data to help, um, you know, to help support uh, users in basically all aspects of our product. So I'll just show you a couple of things. So first of all, this is our assistant in the SQL editor, but this version is without Lakehouse IQ, so it's turned off. And I asked, how many, what is our total revenue in Europe? It gives me a query. It's awesome. I can quickly type it into the editor. This is super cool. Uh, but when I run it, um, it just returns null. So that's unfortunate. So what's the problem? Well, the problem here is actually uh, in this company, uh, Europe is really multiple sales territories. There's like North Europe and South Europe. But there's no way that an assistant, given just the table schema and you know, this question, would know that. So let's try the same thing now with Lakehouse IQ on with what it learned from other usage. We ask, what's the total revenue in Europe? You know, it, it chugs away. Uh, it produces something. And you can see this one. It has learned that actually uh, there are two sales territory, and they're actually called EMEA Northern and EMEA Southern in this company. And the other thing it learned that's really cool is it also learned that you know, in this table, we also have internal usage from our test environments. But we don't want to count that towards revenue, even though like, you can compute how much it, it was worth and how much it cost. And so it actually also learns to put in that filter to, to remove internal usage. So this is you know, a very simplified example of what Lakehouse IQ can do. But anything you know, in your company or like, people have to ask uh, you know, another data scientist how to do this or look up lots of documentation and so on uh, is the type of thing that, um, you know, that this will learn and do for you. And as you use the platform more, as you add documentation, it, it will get um, you know, even better. Um, we're not stopping at assistance. We're using it to enhance other parts of Databricks, including search. So in search, it's very important to find the right data. But again, if you have internal terms, it won't know about them. So I, I did this search on Databricks. I just found this, um, you know, this, uh, this notebook with a where statement, which is sort of useless. Uh, I wanted something about serverless. But with Lakehouse IQ, this enhanced version of search actually knows that the word serverless matches with Nephos, uh, usage matches with DBUs, and so on. And it also has these signals that it's showing me about popularity, who are frequent users of the table, uh, time modified. It'll also tell me if there are upstream quality issues and things like that. 
Um, and we're also using it to help you manage the lake house. So for example, anytime you create or upload a new table, we will uh, try to suggest you know, descriptions for the columns. Uh, and as you're troubleshooting workflows and other things, we'll do that as well. The final thing we're doing, and really the thing I'm most excited about, is we know that you know, Databricks is just one you know, application you use inside your company, but you want to build many more. So we're also making this knowledge engine available through an API that you can use in your own generative AI applications to talk to your enterprise data and natural language and benefit from all the knowledge it learned. So you can write an app, and we're actually integrating this into open source libraries like LangChain. You can write an app where like, you, know, you ask these questions in natural language. You build up you know, complex chains and, 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 and workflows. Um, and when you send them to Databricks, you know, it will interpret those questions based on everything it learned from Lakehouse IQ. And you'll get accurate answers and, and have much more powerful internal enterprise apps. So that's Lakehouse IQ. As Ali said, we're rolling out some initial features of this um, soon, and we're, we're going to keep improving it over time. And to show you a little bit more about what it can do, um, I'd like to invite um, Wes Hutchins, uh, staff product manager at Databricks. Thanks. Let's make sure I got the right laptop here. There we go. Thanks, Mate, and good morning, everyone. All right, so for this demo, let's just say I'm a product manager, and I work for a startup that builds medical device wearables. It's a lovely Wednesday morning. Maybe I'm cleaning out email. I'm at Data and AI Summit, when all of a sudden I get a Slack from my CEO. They want updated numbers for a newly launched product and they want it broken down by a number of dimensions and customer segments. Oh, and it's for a board meeting in exactly 15 minutes. Now, normally, this is going to take me some time. I don't have any of these charts or graphs ready to go, so I have to create a bunch of this from scratch. Don't panic. Let's see if I can pull this off with the help of Lakehouse IQ. So I'm going to go into the assistant here, and we'll start with a simple revenue question. I'm going to ask, what is the revenue for Apollo sales for HLS customers. Lakehouse IQ gives me an instant answer. So I can see that we sold 2,700 units in the last month for a revenue of about $725,000. But there's a few other interesting things to note here. First off, it knew that HLS means health and life science. Second, it also knew that Apollo was the code name for the blood pressure sensor product that we launched. Now, Apollo is not mentioned anywhere in the table or column names. But Lakehouse IQ uses comments from queries and code snippets and descriptions in a Unity catalog to match the code name to the right field in our database. But Lakehouse IQ also surfaces relevant tables for me as well. So if I go down here, I can see that I have an orders gold table. And if we expand it, I get a detailed description, get some sample data. I can even see some Unity catalog tags that have been applied. But furthermore, Lakehouse IQ also understands the relationships between data sets and the people at my company. It knows who I frequently collaborate with and surfaces assets that they use when they have similar questions to mine. I can also see that this table is popular, so it's probably a pretty good place to get started. Let's explore this. And it'll open up a pre-populated query based on my question. But I'm going to refine this a bit more. Let's say, just give me the sales for premium customers in the last three months. Lakehouse IQ makes it really easy to refine queries with natural language. I get a, a, a diff view that shows me what's changed. This looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and insert it into the editor. And now we'll rerun this, and I get some updated results. But you don't actually have to use the panel. We've integrated Lakehouse IQ directly into our editor. So I can start typing a comment. And let's say I only want to show customers with more than 1,000 employees. Lakehouse IQ pulls in common code snippets from my team and surface those directly in my editor. So in this example, we're going to join with our Salesforce data to limit results to just companies that have more than 1,000 employees. 
All right, my query looks good. Now I need to build a viz. I'm a bit more comfortable in Python, so we're going to switch over to a notebook for this. We'll go into the notebook and add a new cell. And then we'll go over here and we'll ask LakehouseIQ to convert this Python, this query over to Python and create a line plot. Lakehouse IQ makes it really easy to switch back and forth between SQL and Python. So you can always use the language that works for you. I'm going to insert this into our cell and we'll go ahead and run it. And all right, well, we have a viz, but there appears to be a problem.、Uh, I don't know what's causing this dip. Let's ask Lakehouse IQ to see if they can help us debug. What is what caused the dip in May? Lakehouse IQ is integrated with Unity Catalog Lineage, so it knows my upstream and downstream dependencies. It can tell me when tables need to be repaired and backfilled. So, in this particular example, it knows that the orders gold table is running, but there appears to be a problem in one of the upstream jobs. Let's go ahead and click on the orders pipeline and we'll see if we can debug what's going on. We've integrated Lakehouse IQ into a number of UI elements inside Databricks, so I can actually ask it. To explain the error message for me and propose a fix. It's a pretty common change. It looks like somebody updated the schema but forgot to update the pipeline code. It's a simple fix. We'll go and repair the runs and backfill the data. This can take a little bit of time, so we've gone ahead and done that for the sake of this demo. Let me go back into my notebook and I'll change this to use the updated table. We'll rerun this and see if our graph gets updated. All right, fantastic. There we go. Let's ask Lakehouse IQ to go and suggest a name for our notebook. And this looks ready to go. I can send this off to my CEO just in time for his board meeting. That's an overview of Lakehouse IQ, the knowledge engine for your company. Thank you.